Welcome to my budget deck channel where I try to make decks as cheap and playable as possible. So if this is something you'd be interested in, then why not subscribe? Today I finally had a look at Sylvans. I got the new Link monster in the new pack. Yes, there were new cards in this pack that uh, support one specific archetype and no other cards basically. The Link monster is absolutely bonkers and before I added it to all of my planned decks and tried to shave down some of the budget then with those ones, I wanted to actually make a real Sylvan deck. I kind of feel like I've did it. It's not that easy to make it on a budget because not because the main deck stuff is very expensive, but because there's lots of extra deck stuff that you can be running and that would make the deck a lot more expensive than it is. So I decided to go for a version that somewhat is planned, locked and utilized the Rika stuff that you might already have because Rika is quite a fun deck and lots of people played it for at least some time. Let's start out with the card by cards. I do run Triple Evil Thorn. This card is very helpful. You can easily go into the Sylvan Link monster. You can easily go into the Sylvan Exis monster. One thing that's problematic with this one obviously is a, well, Ash Blossom and Gamma really destroy this card because then you have no monster on board because you can uh, you have to tribute this card and then you lose all board presence and then you're basically screwed. This is kind of the theme of the deck. Hand traps are awful and um, yeah, Max C, you special summon so many times you do not want to be dealing with Max C, so this is a bit of an issue. Then Ash Blossom, very big of an issue because that can just stop your place very, very early on. Then you obviously have Effect Valor and Ash um, Impermanence. You have an issue with this because one of your biggest choke points is the Sylvan Link monster, so you have that as an issue as well. You already can see uh, the list continues. Even the graveyard stuff, Dimensional Shifter, very, very, um, uh, very unlucky the meta right now because your stuff is mainly happening in the graveyard. So all of these things combined, not a very good starting lineup for a deck that tries to at least compete in platinum possibly. Possibly. It's not very easy with it, but it is a lot of fun. Let's keep on moving. One Spore, first of all, this is a level 1 monster. If you special summon it from the deck, you can special summon it with different effects that I'll be talking about in a second. And you can get this card back from the graveyard and can then go into your Syncro place, which you have some planned Syncros are not, they don't grow on trees. Right? You actually have not that many at your disposal because the thing is, you are locked to plants sometimes and also the thing is some of the plant stuff is expensive so we kind of have to make do with other ones that we have. Mentionable links that you can be playing, the uh, that you can be playing are obviously Baron de Fleur, very very important cards, very very strong, can easily-ish make this card in this deck, so one of the cards that most people would be playing, and Chaos Ruler, which I think isn't necessary to play, because a lot of the time you get all the graveyard effects off regardless uh, if you play this card or not. Yes, it's a very strong card, and it doesn't hurt to have it in the extra deck, but I don't think it is key to how this specific variant plays so i decided we can cut this for budget reasons let's move on to rose lover a card that's very 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 important to your plays because of the fact that you can normal summon this card then go into your san avalon dryas link and then this card is in the graveyard then you can use the effect and you can special summon one plant monster from your hand look at how many monsters we have there will be a plant monster in your hand possibly even one that helps you so this could get you into your link too by itself obviously you also mill stuff so this card will be in your graveyard eventually and uh, those are the kind of combos, I want to call it, that you can be doing. It is not the best card as a super rare to craft, sadly, because you can't be playing in a too many different decks, so it might be a wasted super rare if you don't want to be playing Sylvans at a competitive level at one point and want to upgrade the deck eventually then possibly Sylvans might not be the deck you're looking for because that is two super rares that will be wasted because even in plant decks this card hasn't seen any play anymore since a row mages in dual links probably. Let's move on to some of the Sylvan cards. Sylvan Peacekeeper, very, very funny. This card can be decent. It's not amazing, but it's also not bad. One thing to mention here, some of the Sylvans have win effects, at least as the when it's summoned kind of thing, not for the graveyard. So there they have if effects, funny enough, because otherwise it would be very, very annoying. So when this card is normal special summoned, you can excavate the top card of your deck. And if it's a plant type monster, send it to the graveyard. Otherwise, place it on the bottom of your deck. This effect will be very, very, 
already very reoccurring with the Sylvan theme. Lots of the time it is just one card, sometimes it's more than one, and those are the ones that matter. And the second effect is why this works in the Sylvan deck. If this card is excavated from the deck and sent to the graveyard by a card effect, you can target one level 4 or lower plant type monster in your graveyard, special summon that target. They all have effects, well most of them have effects where that comes in handy, being excavated and then sent to the graveyard by a card effect, which means Foolish Burial doesn't work because excavating isn't uh, what Foolish Burial does. But you can target one level 4 lower plant monster, very important, so you can also get stuff like Lone Fire Blossom back, woohoo, and they are optional effects so you don't have to use the effect so you can technically wait till you mill the second one eventually and then use the effect if you don't have any good cards in your graveyard that you want to be special summoning at the time you think you're gonna get more stuff into the graveyard eventually now my favorite card my favorite sylvan cards the artwork is adorable the name is quite fun and the effect is non plus ultra in my opinion i really like the effect annoyingly it doesn't trigger a normal summon but it's fine there's plenty of ways to special summon this card and then you can mill excavate two cards and do the whole spiel and if this card is uh, sent to the graveyard then you can special summon one level one plant type monster from your deck so this gives you access to rica petal to a tuner it gives you access to so many different things to spore if you want to to evil thorns as well because this is a level one plant monster so you can use this if you still have multiple of them in your graveyard um, in your deck left then you can do all of this but the second effect again is hard once per turn but the first one isn't so you can trigger the special summon effect multiple times per turn one of the new newer cards i think this wasn't around from the start but i'm not 100 convinced i haven't followed sylvan when they were released this card uh, you can tribute it and excavate one card and then send it to the griever then you can place one sprout monster in your griever on top of your deck can be helpful in on the crack back but in the same turn it usually isn't too helpful because if the card is already in the graveyard then you usually don't want to be getting it out unless you summon this card out on a different way haven't used the second effect of this card yet then you tribute it put itself back on top of the deck and then you use more of the sylvan effects because then you can trigger the second effect and if this card is excavated from the deck and sent to the graveyard you can declare a level from one to eight mostly six or eight i sometimes mess it up four can come in handy as well and uh, you kind of have to know which one you want to be going for before you even need it at that point and that can be a bit difficult because i sometimes go into the wrong one and then realize later on in the combo oh wait would have been a bit more beneficial if i did it the other way a lot of the time four six and eight are the ones that matter in this specific variant and then you can special summon it so that is quite nice sadly also a hard once per turn which it wasn't we have one rica petal very special summonable off of the sylvan card this card is quite good to beat stuff like ash blossoms and uh, get you into combos that you might not be doing otherwise it can search your other rica monsters and it does lock you into plants this is one of the cards that locks you into plants you cannot special summon for the rest of this turn except plant monsters so keep that one in mind we have double fingly because this card is very 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 nice if you mill it off of things going second it can half the attack of a monster which is uh, pretty neat and i don't think it targets so that's also uh, something that is quite nice you have to control a different plant monster but usually you will and it is a level one tuner and also if this card would be destroyed by a battle card effect you can send one plant monster from your deck to the graveyard doesn't excavate but it still would work fun fact if you have this card on board and you mill sylvan martial leaf you can attempt to pop martial leaf the, um, use the pop effect for martial leaf to attempt to pop this card because it doesn't say by um the opponent's card effect and then you can send one plant monster to the reverse stuff like world card rate champion for example would work we have a double lone fire blossom you can play triple if you want to you would have to cut at certain other points it's quite hard to find the right ratios for this deck in, in terms of what monsters to play because some monsters mainly affect the effect matters when they get sent to the graveyard by excavation and they don't really do anything on normal summon or something like this or on boards and then there's monsters that mainly do stuff when they're summoned and don't do anything when they excavate and sent to the graveyard so you have to find the right balance between both of them that's what i try to do also i try to keep the deck a bit cheaper so two lone fire blossom is but you can obviously play three of those things as well don't think i have to say much this is access to every single main deck monster in this deck so yeah definitely a good one obviously same issues as evil thorn with the whole tribute card and then get ash blossom or gamut or whatnot so uh yeah problematic one sylvan martial leaf i want to run two of it but the the space is so tight and there's a certain issue that we have with this deck that i'll be touching up a tiny bit further on when it comes to the Rika package 
and that is why I decided to only go for one of them. The effect is nice to pop stuff, but maybe matters going second, and yeah, I mean, you have a way of resetting it to your top of your deck as well with uh, this one, but in the end, the normal summon effect isn't amazing, and there's other cards that you'd rather be uh, doing with this one, but you could technically trade out one of them, for example, and add one Marshall Leaf if you really wanted to, or trade out the Flower Knight to run two Marshall Leafs, that is all possible. We run a double Rose Girl. I tried to run three, it was a bit much, but this card is a nice extender, mainly because you also run Sun Avalon Dryas, and Dryas can get any plant monster from the field to the graveyard, then you can special summon this, and then you can go into Sylvan. Also, this can help you if certain stuff gets negated, and uh, then you still have some way of continuing your plays with the Rikas and with this one, and it's not completely done then once your Ash Blossom, uh, once your Lone Fire or Evil Thorn gets negated, then you can still technically have Rose Girl on board, and then if you have some of the Rika stuff or some other ways of special summoning monsters, then this can come in handy. Sylvan Flower Knight, not a good normal summon, but it is a level 4 monster which can come in handy. Its attack stats are decent for a level 4 monster. It can send one card, and if this card is sent to the graveyard by card effect, you can choose one Sylvan card from your deck and place it on top of your deck. Very, very important. This is how you get your place started from time to time as well. So I like this card at one, but it is very, very hard to find the right balance between running the cards that do stuff on board and running the cards that do stuff when they are being excavated and milled. One World Cardway Champion, because this card very very nice, it synergizes, it creates somewhat of a resource loop with Rose Girl as well and also it, you don't need lots of the monsters in your hand because I already said most of them do, don't do all that much uh, when you normal summon them or if you still have them in hand because they can't special summon them so easy to send to the graveyard and this one helps you getting into your some of your Rikha plays as well. Rikha Princess very nice negate very nice extender also locks you into plants while this card is face up in the monster zone but you can circumvent this fairly easily because you have stuff like Sun Avalon Dryas so this one isn't too bad with the lock and you want to end on one Rika extra deck monster anyway and the good thing is for the negate of this you have to only control a Rika monster but then you can just tribute one plant monster so you can get rid of any other monster and you don't have to get rid of your Rika boss monster for example so this is a nice negate can technically help you against uh, hand traps but it won't come up all that much because like I said you already need a Rika on board and a lot of the time you won't be having that during your combos at least one Sylvan Guardiog, or Guardiog, I guess that's the name, <laughs> I decided to run one. I one time tried out two and it was good, but I had to cut down on it because we did need more consistency cards in here. This one very very nice, it's level 6 so it can help you go into the Rika level 6 monster. It's very neat because you can build 3, you can easily bring it back if you have this, build one of them, get this back, then you have a level 7 Synchro, go into this one, summon this one back, build 3 again and you still have 2 monsters on board and uh, so this combo is quite neat as well. Also you can summon it off of stuff like Lone Fire Blossom, if it's in your hand you can use stuff like the Sylvan Princess Sprite, it won't be a brick most of the time and the second effect tucks one of your cards back in, can also do it for extra deck monsters, so there is that as well. We have Muda and the Rekka Fairy, one of the more expensive cards, because we can search this, and we can summon it out in multiple different ways. This one, if it's in the graveyard, um, Lone Fire Blossom, and the obvious one, Aroma Seraphy Jasmine, is if it's from deck, and if it's from hand, also this one, technically, and Rose Lover, and its own effect, so you will not be breaking on this card ever, you will be getting it off wherever it is, unless it's banished, and uh, it is searchable with Rika Petal, and then it can search the one of Kong Kong, or the one of Rika Sheet, or the one of Glamour, whatever you want, there is lots of stuff to be done with this one, and this is one of the Rikas that actually doesn't lock you into plants, so quite fun. One Sylvan Hermitry, kind of want to be running two, but the draw effect isn't as good as it would be if you play, well, I want to say actual Sylvans, but a different Sylvan decks, this makes more of a difference because you have more rank 8s you can go into, and you have more of a use for the whole draw kind of thing, because right now you draw a card and usually it doesn't do anything in your hand, unless you're lucky and draw into one of the spells that actually does stuff. So this is mainly in here because it can send one card to the graveyard when it's uh, milled, you can rearrange the cards on top of the deck and you can go into rank 8s with this one. And also having one of this in here makes Rika Glamour life. If you tribute a monster then you can search Snowdrop and Hermitry if you didn't already draw into Hermitry, which obviously can happen, or if it's in the graveyard then it doesn't work that way, but other than that it would be fine. 
We have triple snow job the Ricca Fairy. Yes, triple, it uh, doesn't sound very good, but trust me, it makes sense in this deck because this card is a, a extender. You see how many monsters we run, so we will always have one monster in hand that does something. For example, if you special summon this one from hand with it, then you can go into rank ones, or you can go into rank eights, or you can go into the synchro, uh, the, yeah, no, the link monster, and this one then still mills too, so this one's quite fine. And you have lots of normal summons that don't really do that much, then you want to still get into two monsters, or this can be a follow-up play if something gets veilered or impermed, for example. So this one is a very, very neat extender, but also locks you into plant monsters. Not an issue in this specific variant, but if you want to upgrade your extra deck, that can be problematic and you might have to run other more expensive cards for that one. One of the ultra rest is actually free. Monster Reborn, very, very important in this deck because obviously most of the stuff happens in the graveyard. You have so many mill things and being able to recycle one card back from your graveyard is insane. We have Rika Glamour, mainly to get you into Snowdrop. Um, also, it's good going second in combination with the Field Spell because you contribute your opponent's monster. Very important with that one. And technically, it can also go into Rika Princess plus stuff like Flower Knight or Carrot Weight and, and so on. So there is... Well, there's options what you can do with it, and I feel like this card is a tiny bit better than Tranquility. If you want to keep it as cheap as possible, don't go into Rika Glamour and just play Tranquility and Cheat. It's not as good, but it is still possible in my opinion. We have Double White Rose Cloister, a card that at first I toyed right with, didn't really like it. Then I said like, oh yeah, screw this, I'm cutting this card out. Then decided, wait, this is actually better than I thought because it's quite helpful in moving around the whole, oh, if Evil Thorn or Lone Fire Blossom get negated um, and then you don't have any monsters, then you can still special summon one monster here or you don't have to use your normal summon at the start because you usually, if you start with this one and this one, you'd usually just use the effect anyway and just special summon one plant monster from your hand. The second effect works as well to boost <laughs> level 7 or higher synchro monsters you control, which this one can go up quite high attack with uh, the effect of this one and mainly you will be excavating a monster because you have mainly monsters so technically the second effect works but the first effect is where it's at. I wish I wouldn't have to resort to these kind of measures but that is how you get more monsters on board and how you can sometimes circumvent the whole stuff of Lone Fire Blossom and Evil Thorn being uh, well wiped out effect wise and then you are left with no monsters on board. What you also can be playing obviously is stuff like one for one, things like reasoning work because you can get other stuff on board or at least you can trigger the effect of the Sylvans so that usually works out as well. You can be running Sylvan Charity. I like the card but not enough to craft uh, altar is for it and if you just want to try out the deck then I wouldn't say go into Charity instantly. You can then put in one or two Charities along the way because this card does stuff. It can help you fix your hand a little bit, it can help you trigger the effects because then you obviously have ways of stacking stuff on top of your deck and then things like Marshall Leaf become a tiny bit better for example and so on and so on and so on but at the moment I didn't feel like that was worth the ultra rares to be included in this deck. Uh, Rika Kong Kong, a card that you get for free in the solo story so you don't have to craft this. If you're super lazy you can but you do get the three of this for free in the Rika solo mode if I'm not mistaken and one Rika sheet. You could run Tranquility, I tried it out but sheet came in more handy because you don't have to control the Rika monster and uh, you don't have to, well, to, I mean for this one you don't either but the thing is you have to have one Rika monster in your graveyard and if you want to be using it with the field spell you have to control a Rika monster and that's the only way how this is like super use useful whether this is still useful if you don't have a Rika monster at the field spell on board so I felt like this was a bit better but this one is funny especially if you play it in combination with the Sylvan rank 8 monster because with this you can technically get stuff like Cherub Sprout back and then you can mill one card to the graveyard which then triggers the effect of this card during your opponent's turn and then you can shuffle one card under your opponent's deck which is also nice so this is something to keep in mind at least if you want to be doing that one. For the extra deck Splendid Rose just because it can come up it's a plant monster it can help you beat over something. Eh. One of the only non-plant monsters for Cyflame Lord Zeta. This is one placeholder spot where you can put any other good card in here. I just put this in because level 7 synchros aren't too hard to get into and sometimes this can help in a pinch. We have the actual good level 7 synchro is this one. Already explained a lot of the time this helps you getting stuff out of your hand. Helps you get stuff from back from your graveyard. And uh, can attack wise because you will have pretty busy boards a lot of the time. Will be going up to quite some high attack stats. Seven Princess Sprite, a card you kind of want to be running at too, just because of the fact of 
well, it is good and sometimes you need it in the next turn again and you just don't have it anymore in your extra deck. It can get the stuff back from your graveyard. And also with the second effect, very important with this is the second effect makes it so if you have any sylvan monster in grave, you can also send one from your hand to the graveyard, then special summon out this one. For example, if you're stuck with a uh, guardy oak in your hand, then you can send it to the graveyard for the effect and then special summon it and then mill three again. So that works as well. One plant level for a well rank four monster. You can run any other rank four if you have them, but this is a plant one, so it always works. Not that it's a good one, but sometimes it comes up. Rika Queen Strena is the actual one that you want to be going into very, very strong. You can get one plant monster, Rika Cartney Griever, added to your hand. So that also works with extra deck monsters. This is a way of how you could recycle stuff like Dancy Pion if you want to. Not too hard to do that. And if this card with Xyz material is tributed, you can special summon one rank 5 or higher plant Xyz monster, which mainly will be this one, but could also be one of those two if you want to. So this is a neat effect in combination with Rika Princess, which you want to be having in Graveyard, so we can attribute that one then. We run one Kanzashi the Rika Queen, mainly because it can come up with uh, Guard Yoke and things like Snowdrop, for example, or the Princess Sprout. We don't run any other level sixes, but if we had two of this technique, you'd come up. And actually, we have Mudan, so that's also fine. This card is better than it seems like because you can get another body on board. Even though the effects are negated, you can still get it on board and you can summon an attack position. So this is good. Plus, this card is protection for your whole plant board. If plant monsters you control will be destroyed by card effects, you can attribute one plant monster from your hand even instead, which is nice. And then you can trigger the other effect and summon one monster back from either player's graveyards and it becomes plant, which is not as bad as it sounds. We have teardrop, very, very important removal. We have this as a negate, can become a spell negate, but mainly will be monster negate as well. So you can already see this deck has massive, massive issues dealing with spells and trap cards. It is what it is. You can't even really get rid of back row all that much. So a bit problematic from time to time. Dryas already talked about this. I do run one Gardener because sometimes you will be stuck on a Dryas on board just end your turn because either Maxi or other uh, hand traps and stuff. And then this plus this can theoretically save your turn. Not that really matters, but yeah, you can cut this card if you want to. But that's just a tiny mini engine that we'll have in here to possibly not instantly lose in the first turn if I have to surrender to Maxi, kind of. Aroma Seraphy Jasmine, very important. Zone placement becomes very important with these two anyway, so always try to summon them in the middle zone, the outer right or the outer left zone if you want to have a certain place. This one, very nice. Maybe the second effect matters because you don't have a way of gaining life points in this deck. We have Dance of Pion, very, very broken the effect uh, to actually summon two monsters and possibly trigger the effect of a third one that you mill, so very nice. And Keep in mind, you cannot use those then for link materials, but if you, for example, get stuff like Evil Thorn or Lone Fire Blossom, it doesn't matter because you can just use the effects and so on and so on and so on. You can go into rank uh, monsters with no problem. And actually, you can also target one plant monster in your graveyard that has a level. The levels of monsters this card points to, that's why it's important, become that monster's level until the end of this turn. So easy to go into rank fours, rank sixes, or rank eights with this one as well. The other card that's not a plant monster, Deco Talker, Budget Hero, put in Access Code Talker, put in any other good Link 3s, Link 4s, whatever you have. And the Link 4 that you can easily go into that is a bounce and can be revived, but it burns you, so it's a bit annoying from time to time. But other than that, still a very good card. You can obviously play Appaloosa. Cards to consider is, uh, well, the, the actual Sylvans, not too hard to go into. Um, you don't really run many or any level 7s in the deck, but you can make this card level 7 and you have your level 7 soon crow, so it's not impossible to then go into it with Snowdrop Rika, and you can go into it with Strena, but yeah, it doesn't matter all that much. This card I would include just mainly because it's also a Sylvan card, and it does come up quite a lot. It's not that hard to go into it at all, because you have so many ways of making rank 8s, and having a second rank 8 in here for any of the other cards like Zeta would be very nice, but for budget reasons I wanted to keep it down a little bit. Cards to consider, Port of Avarice isn't bad in here, but would add another super rare, and it doesn't come off if your opponent does stuff in your turn, like if your opponent shuts down your turn, then mainly it won't go off, and then it doesn't do anything for the deck all that much, I'd rather run stuff like Reasoning then. One card I wouldn't really recommend is Mount Sylvania, I had three of it from the one pack, and I tried it out, and you can see I got rid of them all, I didn't like it out one single bit, didn't do all that much for me. You can run some combos with Stay Sailor uh, Romarin, but I don't really like them all that much, but there is stuff that you can be doing with it and isn't terrible, so keep that one in mind at least. Let's move on to the rating section.
For the rating section, keep in mind this is just about this specific list. This is not saying anything about sylvans in general or plants in general. This is just this specific list and kind of in comparison to other budget decks, not in comparison that much to other decks because Telemans is just over out of the scale basically at this point. So yes, do not compare it to stuff like Telemans because it won't be able to compete with it at all because no budget deck can. That's just what it is. Uh, in power level wise. Power level wise, I want to give it like a very, 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 very strong two, kind of the same as UAs. It can produce a board that is stronger than UAs in a lot of different cases, besides the fact that you lack an Omni Negate. Uh, whoops, that can be very problematic. Um, other than that, it is more susceptible to hand traps and more susceptible to the anti-meta decks at the moment in this format. So this is a bit annoying. You will struggle a lot with this deck just because of Tealemans being so good and Tealemans using the graveyard and this deck also uses the graveyard. And so every deck that you run into that isn't Tealemans will possibly run something that's against Tealemans and that's against you then as well. And like I already said, every single hand trap basically ends this a deck's turn. Sadly, I have tried to come up with some ways to how to extend plays slightly, and if your opponent doesn't really know what you're up to, then it can work from time to time, but it is incredibly hard, especially on a budget, to make a deck that is resilient enough to play it through two or three disruptions. So going second is also not a great joy with this one, especially considering you don't run any hand traps either. You could be running maxi, but that doesn't change all that much. So a very, very, very strong two, bordering to very weak three. Keep it in your mind. It's not awful and it's really fun to play, but meta-wise, ranked-wise, it could be a lot better. And other budget decks kind of are better at consistently, even through hand traps, putting up two disruptions or something. And this one can put up like four, but not through hand traps. That is what it is. Next up, consistency. I would give this like a straight three. It isn't crazy, it isn't good. The thing is with consistency, you will have brick hands just by the fact of, oh, there's lots of Sylvan cards that don't do anything in your hand when you normal summon them. That's just what it is. Sometimes that comes up. And it comes up in like one out of 10 or out of 15 duels. It's not crazy often. A lot of the time you will be able to do something and will be able to go into your Sylvan link monster combo, but then the disruptions plays into it again. And in the end, yeah. It is fairly consistent in what it does, but it's also fairly easy to shut down. And that, in my opinion, harms the consistency of the deck because they can, in an actual real setup, you cannot actually consistently put up the place you want to be putting up because there's just so much disruption around. So uh, this is why I would say like a three, it's still fine. It's nothing too, too bad, but it is, yeah, it's okay. For the budget value, I would say a very, very, very weak three, mainly because of the fact that most of these cards aren't generic cards, so you can't really do much with them. Besides, some of the extra deck monsters are fairly generic at least, um, so you cannot be doing too much with them. And also you run stuff like the Rose Lady, which, if, yes, it doesn't matter in most decks other than this one, so it's kind of a wasted um, thing. And the deck isn't really cheap either. It's not like crazy expensive, but isn't cheap. The only thing that gives it some points is the plant engine, like Lone Fire Blossom, like the Rika stuff, you will be able to use in any kind of plant deck if you want to, because this is just generic plant support at this point. Very, very strong in that as well. So is the link, so are the link monsters, they are just generic plant support at this point, and the Xyz monsters as well, you can do very much with them. So you don't waste too much stuff if you like plant decks in general, because you probably already need most of the stuff for Rikas, for Plant Synchro, Plant Xyz, for uh, Sun Avalon stuff, you know what I mean? You can see this uh, does stuff like that, but other than that, it's not very helpful outside of the whole plant engine, and some of these craft points are a bit wasted. So that is a solid three for me as well. The deck is really fun though. I really enjoyed playing it. I really enjoyed building it and testing it in the solo mode specifically where people do not disrupt you. It is so cool to see how much you can pull off, how many different summons you can do, but then uh, the more summons you do, the more susceptible to hand traps you become, especially when Max, Max C is around. So there's something to keep in mind. Let's go to the replay section. All right, I have this time brought a go second replay, mainly because this replay shows what this deck can do and also shows a bit of its issues. 
there will be more replays coming soon. I started to do a series of 10 duels in a row in Ranked. I will still work on it a little bit. I'm not happy with how I did it in the first place, but there's one for UA and there will be one for this one. I'm not saying it's gonna go great. I'm not promising anything. It's probably gonna be awful, but you will be seeing this play uh, this deck in action a lot more if you stay tuned, but I want to still include at least one replay for the people that can't be arsed watching a 10 <laughs> dual replay video. So there we go. We play against some Branded deck, 60 card branded, no tier limits though, very 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 interesting, but they do the classic branded stuff, they send things to the graveyard, they go to Lobelion, Lobelion discard more stuff, and uh, well we have the two Albuses already, we have sent to the graveyard things that search Alibur, which can be quite nice, we go into Mergeade, obviously Mergeade, very very strong cards. And we're summoning the Albas monster back. There is a reason for this, I think, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Okay, so we pause this here because what can we do? Well, first let's draw. What can we be doing here? We can summon Evil Thorn and go into stuff, but the thing is, if they get rid of my monster after I have summoned Evil Thorn and instantly banish it, then my turn is already screwed. So this is not something I want to be doing. I want to be summoning Rika Princess first here actually, because Rika Princess then gives me access to other stuff, because now I can normal summon this one. And then I can always, if they decide to get rid of one of the two, then I can link away one of the other two and summon Rose Girl and I still can go into the link, um, into the silver link monster and i still have plays and i hoped that these two aren't negates for me so uh yeah let's do see what i did here now i go into the silver link mainly because of the fact that i wasn't sure what else i was going to do at this point if they got rid of it it's still fine because this triggered on link summon so it wasn't much of a wasn't much of an issue to me at all if they had a negate then yeah the turn stopped here anyway regardless because this is a massive choke point i could have gone into some other stuff but if they had a negate there wasn't all that much I could do. I could go into Aroma Seraphy with it, but that doesn't really help. I can then go into things like Deco Talker probably with the whole Rose Girl thing, but that wouldn't really help all that much. Um, yeah, you see the dilemma that you have with this specific deck, but they did not have a negate. They had Super Poly. Not sure why they wanted to use Super Poly here because that doesn't stop the effect of it, but at least they, I can't use the monsters that I summon off of this for the so, uh, well for another link summon here so that is what happened they go into the iron dash dragon which not very great but at least it does stuff maybe they were playing on a bit of a budget as well but 60 card branded doesn't sound very cheap considering you play keeper of dragon magic and this kind of stuff as well we hit some pretty nice cards obviously we be summoning out these two and send rose lover to the graveyard we still have one in graveyard but for the next turn that is not too bad and why would we summon it because the other ones actually do stuff on board we go into a rose girl so we have enough cards for the aroma seraphy combo as well so that is not too bad now we uh, send two cards to the graveyard and we hit the sprouts very very nice all well, the peacekeeper and the sprout we summon out the Sylvan Cherub Sprout from the graveyard. Thing is, it misses timing here. It would uh, activate the effect if it's summoned from the graveyard, but it misses timing because we did the chain links wrong when it comes to this. Um, because if I went to Rika Petal anyway, I should have done it the other way around and then I wouldn't have missed timing here. But also, if I milled something that would have done stuff now, I had a full board and uh, in the end, it was probably better if I wouldn't have used this effect anyway. Now you can see we have plenty filled board here and I don't think they expected this, neither did I, that I was going to get that far. Now I can use the Rika effect, get into Mudan, Mudan is our way around some of the stuff. We All we need now is the Rika, well we already have Rika Princess in, uh, in the graveyard as well, so monster effects don't do that much to us now. But I want to negate the second effect of Mirror Jade because otherwise they just clear our board at the end of the turn and that isn't that nice because it sends, it doesn't destroy it, so I can't do anything with the the other Rika monster that protects from destruction either, so I want to keep the neg negate, not for their banish, but for the other stuff. They use Dogmatica and Counter, for some reason they play this. I can see how this can be nice in their variant, because you can get Fallen of Albas back during my turn, and then if they had a card, they could fusion summon here. Not that it would matter too much to us, but yeah, it doesn't do all that much. And now that I know that this isn't a card that matters, uh, very good for me, is because now I can just pop off, because I know the only thing they have is the Mirror Jade right now. We send things to the graveyard, we summon back the card that mills three, and for now we should be going into some other stuff. We are trying to keep one Rika on board, so we always have the negate live. That is one of the more tricky things you have to keep in mind, that you want to have a Rika monster on board. We search the, the Concon, we search 
with the corn corn some, something else and now they decide to get rid of uh, my big monster so i can't do the mill three i guess it's i don't know if that's a good choice that probably would have been more sensible to wait because there's nothing i really could have been doing against this if they then hit me on the whatever monster i got out and even if i went into the rank uh, the link four monster and i've bounced it the thing is I still would have lost that monster then and got 3000 damage so in the end it would have been better than doing this here. Um, maybe they thought I can go into some crazy Sunko place, I'm not sure, then they should have probably just gone getting rid of the tuner here. We go into Glamour now, they had to fire it at least here anyway because I would have gotten rid of it so in the end would have had to use it after I searched it so it doesn't make much of a difference so I guess this one was possibly the best one to get rid of, possibly Lone Fire as well, I don't know in this scenario but this is how we get rid of it and now they activate the effect in the graveyard because we i guess we got rid of their card by card effect and uh, now i negate the graveyard effect so we don't have that issue anymore later on i thought it would be better to leave up the level six monster but then in the end i got rid of it i should have gotten rid of lone fire blossom here because lone fire cannot be used as a link material because it was summoned off of the sylvan link should have remembered that one and i went into peacekeeper because i ran out of most stuff that actually does th things i think i ran out of both uh, of the sprouts as well because what, they're both in the graveyard if i'm not mistaken gonna, uh, exactly so we have that one to mill one card and we mill one of the ones that we haven't used so far now i go into a level six so i can technically go into rank six with the snowdrop as well Possibly you should have been a level 8 here or a level 4, it always depends on what you want to be doing. We go into Jasmine, Jasmine can't attribute the Lone Fire Blossom but we still have both Thorns a deck so we still go further. You can see how many stuff, how many things you can actually special summon and Maxi is devastating against this. At this point I feel like I just special summon without real purpose. I think I can do more plays than I'm already trying to achieve here. So I'm probably overextending like crazy. We go into teardrop and then we use the effect of the Seraphy. We get the level four out because I thought, oh, I could possibly go into the rank four here, but there's no way of me getting back the second level four to go into the rank four, which is a bit annoying. Then I boost the attack by this because the card got tributed. I go into the level uh, the link four to bounce something back and i decided to go get rid of this one was in the end a bad idea because obviously a luber comes back and would negate the effect but it's only to the end of the turn and then i can just chain it and get rid of the other monster so i can clear the board here and i have two disruptions for the next turn which isn't too bad carried weight is also coming back so i can still use this and i thought why not go completely ham at this point possibly i'll be drawn into some other card that i need or get one of the other rickas into the graveyard so i have another negate during my opponent's turn and i did actually hit the Rika Fairy so that was quite good I wasn't sure anymore if I did but that was the thought behind this because I knew I had still two in the deck and the deck isn't too busy anymore so I thought I might get one on hand or on feel uh, on the graveyard because uh, basically it's a draw two for me at that point and also more attack damage wouldn't matter too much so I have three disruptions for the opponent's turn and I cleared up their board and my board doesn't get destroyed during the end of the turn so that is pretty nice they now get another monster effect sadly in the in their end phase because they have sent this to the graveyard and they get their branded fusion which I can do anything about because I don't have a spell trap negate but I can negate the effect of the monster that they summon off of it so it doesn't really matter too much. They still have tragedy so they can still get another one back. Not sure why they searched that then and not one of the other branded things. Don't know it is what it is. Maybe they forgot they had that effect as well. They use keeper again to get polymerization which we do have to play around somewhat so we have to get rid of that they go into branded fusion doesn't really matter to us at all they use the rebellion effect i decide to negate this with the graveyard effect because they can use it in materials from anywhere and i thought since they got rid of poly it doesn't really matter they don't have that much that they can be doing and uh, we can get rid of carrot weight and we are still fine then i decided to in the end um i think they summon albas back and I then decided to get this card back to the hand and then fall like the uh, Albus of the Ashen triggers in the graveyard if a monster you control leaves the field by opponent's card effect I always thought it had to be like a Despia or Albus monster 
for that to work. So I got caught off guard a little bit here and they summoned this one out and then to protect my stuff I had to tribute this. Technically I could have let them attack it and just summon this back by banishing my two link monsters from the graveyards and then it would have had it again next turn so it wouldn't have mattered too much here. And um, But like this I got rid of that one. I would have still had that effect during my turn then. Might have been the better play here. We get Rika Petal back so we can search even more stuff. Very very nice. And now we have another princess. Wow, look at us go. We have the last monster negate that we can use. We search uh, Snowdrop. We can do lots of things now. Getting this back card back by taking even more damage. And now a Luber and the other one trigger. And I thought, let's maybe negate a Luber so we can finish the game here and don't run into more difficulties. We get still the attack boost for this card then, uh, because I, this card's effect isn't negated. And uh, now we have Hermetry's effect, just to see what can come out of it. Nothing can come out of it. We have Rose Lover, we go into everything we have. Technically could have gone into another rank 8 here if I had one. That is always the problem with budget decks, but you can see it's not too hard to go into the Sylvan rank 8 if you just splash it into the deck. We have a monster that's high enough attack point to beat over this. We know it's zero attack point by this point. Uh, they don't have anything else they can be doing, and we just finish the game here. This showcases what the weaknesses of this deck are. You've probably seen you will have to bend yourself backwards to actually get into your place. But once the play starts, you don't really know when to stop at certain points because your extra deck isn't as prepared as your main deck is. You have so many ways of summoning stuff out, but you don't have that many cards to go into. So this deck is fairly upgradable, I want to say, but also it lacks a bit uh, of versatility when it comes to being plant locked a lot with this specific build that I decided to go with. For other builds you can go for different stuff but then the deck gets a lot more expensive if you want it still to be consistent and have ways to play around certain hand traps. So that is where we're at. Hope you enjoyed the deck profile. Leave a like, comment, subscribe but most importantly I hope you have a nice day.